don't need my hair. Hi friends, my name is Julie and welcome back to my farm. I realized the other day that it's been a full nine years since I quit my career as a research scientist to farm full time. The first couple years I was an intern on a couple of different farms around the country but by 2015 I had bought this property. Now this had been my dream since I was a child. I just didn't see it as a viable career until into my 30s. I still love this job and this lifestyle just as much as I did seven years ago when we bought this farm. And believe me, there are definitely some perks. The food is amazing. And yeah, baby animals can be pretty great. <laughs> I get to work outside every day, experiencing fresh air and sunlight and seeing firsthand the changing of the seasons. And I get to be my own boss, make my own schedule, and make all the decisions about how this business is run. But the reality is there are many downsides to this lifestyle that I think most people don't consider or don't take seriously before they get started in farming. In this video, I'm gonna cover some of the harsh realities that you may wanna consider before starting your own small farm. Now don't get me wrong, some of the jobs are really fun, like driving the tractor. And some of the jobs are kind of gross. You're gonna have to learn to deal with poop and a lot of it if you're gonna raise animals. And then some jobs are absolutely disgusting. Some of the jobs are kind of dangerous. The hardest challenge to overcome for most new farmers is just the relentlessness of this job. You have to get up every day and feed those animals or tend those crops weed your garden or milk your goats. There's always something that needs to be done. This job is not a nine to five kind of gig. Often just to get by, you're gonna be working 12 to 14 hour days, just trying to keep up with everything that's going on. Your days can be really unpredictable and you have to show up regardless of the weather or how you feel. If I'm sick, I don't have the luxury of laying in bed. I still have to get up and feed my animals. That's the responsibility of a farmer. The lives that you steward always have to come first. As a farmer, you're not likely to get many vacations. My husband and I have had to travel separately from each other, just so somebody that knows what's going on is here at the farm. Now there is the option of hiring a farm sitter, but that's putting a lot of faith and trust in somebody to care for a lot of animals and deal with a lot of potential issues. Plus, it would be expensive. It's not a small job to manage everything that needs to go on in a farm. Even if they're just maintaining it for a few days, it can be a lot for just one person. And the hours can add up. That can double the cost of any vacation. Plus, at least for me, anytime I'm away for more than a day or two, I really worry. There's so many things that can go wrong, and no one knows these animals better than me. I'll actually experience quite a bit of anxiety while I'm away, and that's not exactly the most restful vacation. The rural lifestyle can be quite isolating. After a hard day of farming, I have very little time or energy for a social life. And even if I did, I don't want to venture very far from the farm because chances are it's not too long before I have more chores to do. There's often not much to do in a rural community. No movie theaters, no fancy restaurants, so there's not much point in going out as well. That's not to say that you can't have some sort of social life. We enjoy 
you know, a quiet drink with friends around a fire, but anything more exciting than that is usually out of the question. At least I always have these sweet pups to keep me company. The role of a farmer can be both physically and mentally demanding. Almost everything you do includes a lot of walking, a lot of lifting heavy things, carrying things far distances, and doing that all in whatever weather, from freezing temps to sweltering heat. You're gonna encounter new challenges every day. This is actually one of the things I really like about farming, but there's some days when it can also be very frustrating. Some days are just super depressing, like this morning when I got up here and found four of my chickens dead. You have to be able to deal with the hardships and the heartaches that come along with farming, especially if you're raising animals like I am. I have to constantly be vigilant, protecting my animals from disease, injury, predation, you name it. And even when it's my choice, when it's time to send one of our animals to the processor, that's not an easy day. But in the end, that's the animal fulfilling its purpose. And so I have to be okay with that. You're gonna have to learn to deal with adversity. There's gonna be a lot of heartache. Animals will die. Pests will wipe out your garden. You're basically at the whimsy of nature, weather, disease, predators. These can dictate whether you succeed or fail and you have absolutely no control over much of it. You have to be able to accept failure and move on. You're gonna to have to think on your feet and learn to solve problems with whatever you have at hand. And this leads me to my larger point. Burnout is a very real problem in the farming community. This is one of the main reasons that many don't go on for longer than a few years. Oh yeah, and then there's the financial stress. Farming is almost always a High labor, low income job. You're gonna work your butt off for very little pay. In the first few years, it's optimistic to hope to even break even, let alone make a profit. Now it is possible to get to the point where you can pay yourself, pay your bills, maybe even hire someone to help you, but you're gonna have to work really hard to get that business to that point. And in the meantime, you're gonna have to learn to live really frugally. I recommend trying to get debt free before you enter your first farming business, but it is pretty common for farmers to accumulate debt as their business grows. Profit margins in a good year can be really slim. And as we've discussed, there are many outside forces that could just wipe out your whole farm with one storm or bad day. For most family farms, somebody still has to have an off farm job. For the first few years when we got started, both me and my partner had full-time off-farm jobs. I worked mostly during the day and he worked at night so that one of us could be here all the time. But those meant very long, hard days for both of us. Now financially, that was the only way we were gonna get started. Not only did we have to live very frugally, we also had to be very creative and resourceful. We had to make do with what we had here because we didn't really have much of an operating budget. It took about four years before we could start thinking about quitting our jobs. And even then, the farm was really only paying our basic bills. I got into farming because it was my dream and because I knew that I could raise animals in a way that was better for them, better for the environment, and produce a healthier meat for my customers. I just wanted to be here on the farm taking care of my animals. Once things got rolling, I quickly realized that I needed to treat this like a business, which meant I needed to learn a whole lot of new things. As a farmer, you need to wear a lot of hats, learn to do a lot of jobs, acquire many skills that you may not have thought of. There are a lot of legal considerations, insurance liabilities, accounting and taxes, and then the whole marketing side, which is really dealing with people and sales and not something I imagined myself doing as a farmer. But if I wanna stay farming, then this needs to be profitable and I don't have a choice. I need to learn those things. I need to be good at those things. Otherwise, I'm not gonna stay farming very long. Now, I don't say all of this to discourage you from farming. Far from it. The reason I started this channel is because I really want to encourage new people to get started. 
But if you're gonna pursue this as a career, you should just understand that there are some things that aren't as romantic or ideal as some people make them out to be. Especially before you commit your time and energy and your hard-earned money into something like this. It's not an easy living, but it is a rewarding one. <laughs> and it's always been my dream, and I can't believe that I get to get up and do this every day. Before you jump in, I recommend that you do something like I did, and that's get an internship, apprenticeship, or even work part-time on a small farm. Not only will this give you a first-hand view of what the life is really like, it's also a great way to learn and acquire some of those skills I was talking about. But if you're ready to jump in and commit full-time to the farming lifestyle, I really want you to succeed. If you're looking for some ways that you can make money on a small farm, check out this video right here. And if you're ready to start making some real money at some farmer's markets, you're gonna wanna check out this video right here.